Namaste again. So this is the stretching exercise demonstration for people in posture groups eight and nine. Meaning you don't really get around, right? <laughs> um, for people in group nine, of course, you're not even able to stand. You probably have to get help getting into a bed or something. Um, for people in group eight, you might technically be able to move around. And I have, no, in the notes you'll notice, you guys are supposed to watch two videos. And there is an overlap on purpose. If at all possible, if you are able to stand at all and you are able to work your way down to the floor, just like I talk about in that video, it's super important to do that. Super, super important. But there's going to be times when it just feels like too much for you, in which case you can definitely benefit a great deal from the sitting exercise demonstration. So, again, remember your keys first. Don't forget a mirror. For you, it's going to be super easy to set up a mirror because you're confined to the chair, right? <laughs> um, the keys again, stick people posture. That one's a lot harder for you to notice. Sitting is, of course, the one position that the human body was not designed to do. So the fact that you are only comfortable in that position speaks volumes, right? <clears throat> um, you are really going to need that mirror very, very badly. And you're going to have a hard time telling when you're actually using that stick person posture. So that's, yeah, I guess I can't really explain that very well with words. I'm going to show you how to, how to help with that, right? The other key, of course, to remember is the belly breathing. Make sure when you breathe in, your belly goes out. beginning of every exercise session, it's important to take a minute or two to do nothing more than simply sit there and breathe. Just tune into your body. You know, this isn't about getting through your chores so you can go play, right? We want to tune in as deeply as we can. So just sit there and breathe. Sometimes, you know, if I'm in a lot of pain, nothing more than finding a perfectly good way to sit. Again, you should probably be using something like this pillow to adjust your chair. In this case, this chair, it's built into the chair. I don't need to use that. But some, you know, just sitting there, doing this a little bit to make sure that you're, you're, you're more doing the stick person thing, right? And just just focusing on letting everything drop and relax. If at all possible, let your head relax backwards rather than forwards. I will also allow you to then lay back in your chair with your shoulders back. You sit there and do some belly breathing. When I'm in the most pain doing nothing more than correcting my posture and breathing like I come back to life, right? And of course, once we start moving, don't forget the third key, which is full range of motion. That one's going to be a little easier for you, I think. You're going to notice so much difference from simple motions, simply because you are confined to a chair and so motionless most of the time. You're probably not going to be tempted to overreach as far as you can, just a little more, right? You just Keep slowly shifting. You know, when you're in a lot of pain, a lot of those warnings become unnecessary because you're not cruising through at the speed of light and your body will let you know that it doesn't like it. <laughs> you get the idea. So again, well, what I'm going to show you here is a little routine that you can use to get yourself started if you're having trouble noticing what your body wants at all. Or maybe something to start thinking of after... You do nothing more than just sitting up and doing whatever happens to feel good. All right. You can hang on to your chair in lots of ways that allow you to stretch body parts that normally people would not stretch unless they were doing some kind of floor exercise. 
but you can use this chair to do a pretty acceptable version of all the floor stuff, believe it or not. You know, if you have a good chair with a decent frame, which you undoubtedly do, you have things that you can pull on, both to catch yourself from going into a bad position when you feel pain, and just to help you. Like right now, oh, this is a big deal. You know, if you don't have very good arm strength, start to do some exercises and develop some arm strength. So you can, if all you can do is just keep your arms straight, even if you have to kind of lock them out to do it so you can hang. It feels incredible. When you're sitting all the time, it just, that, that's, that's one of the most powerful things you can do. You know, again. Follow your body mind first if at all possible. When you're ready for a little routine, um, there's a few simple things to keep in mind. One of them you kind of saw me doing automatically just when I was doing whatever feels good, right? It feels good to bring our arms out right like this, right? Well, the foundation of the whole school of yoga is a little routine that basically is just kind of an overview of all the different positions at once to kind of open everything up and wake you up you know um, people who have less mobility challenges they can do a simple little five minute routine every morning and night that just opens everything up and helps you wake up and helps you fall asleep it's pretty cool and um the most the the, the name for for this little routine which is actually a set of five different poses is is really for the one you saw me kind of doing they call it the sun salute which is nothing more sitting up if at all possible oh i'm sorry i'm rushing ahead yes for some of you you cannot scooch forward yet um but if at all possible the first part of the exercise after you just sit and breathe for a minute right is to scoot yourself forward to the front of the chair so that you can perch. It is going to require a little more energy and effort because now you have to hold yourself up. You can't recline against the back, right? But if it's possible for you, this is an excellent exercise. It's important to do independently of, of something holding you up, if at all possible. So the first thing to do, if you, can, if, if you have better arm strength, you can simply lift yourself up, do some hanging, and then move forward, right? If you have more trouble moving forward, you want to grab the back of the chair rather than underneath here. If I move my feet a little and go straight up, my hands are more in the middle, right? Not out here because I'm still sitting back in the chair. It's like two-thirds of the way down the handle, right? If I'm having trouble lifting myself, I can push myself forward. There's little bits get yourself to the edge of your chair you still want to have your you still have your armrests available right um ooh. <laughs> you don't tip your chair <laughs> you get the idea try to make it so that your knees are square you know your hips and your knees and your heels are lined up but if you're perched here on the edge you have a, a little greater range of well i don't know a fair bit greater range of motion than you do sitting back there. So, the sun salute is nothing more than stretching backwards and around in circles. Right? I can actually feel things shifting right now. Oh. And back down. Now, I'm guessing you are probably not going to be reaching backwards nearly as clearly and well as I was, right? That's going to take a little time. But get as far as you can. You know, if all you can do is this, this is, this is a big deal. Everybody can at least tip their chin up, even if it's not all the way back, right? And everybody will be able to reach a certain amount, probably a little bit more 
Now, the, okay, the camera is kind of misleading. I have the chair angled so you can see me better, but now it's hard to see whether my arms are forwards or backwards, right? This is dead straight, you know, like I'm strung up to a cross. Um, even if this is as far as you get, that's okay. But odds are you'll get a little bit farther and it'll probably change from day to day. Now for people in other groups, this is also goes well with the breathing exercises. Not so much for people in groups eight and nine. Okay, you're gonna wanna take a lot more than whatever your breathing cycle is to get up and down in those circles. You're gonna wanna move a lot more slowly than others might. You don't wanna do it so slow it becomes difficult Oh, right. See, that kind of hurt when I when I do this with my back. Even if that that felt like the bad stretching, it's like no, that's not proper motion because I did not keep my back straight. Right. There's going to be times that you're maybe tempted to do something because I can feel right now this part of my back wants to move. It's like get out of this chair, Angie. I, I want to move. Right. <laughs> and for you, that's hard to do. So if you start noticing your lower back is acting up a bit. <clears throat> It's because it wants to move and it can't when you're in a chair. So that's when you can go back to doing this. This arm raise thing is definitely a big deal for people sitting in a chair. And as you get better and get more talented, you can start swinging your knees around, start getting some twists in there, right? You know, you're going to maybe not be able to do much of it in the beginning, but it's actually pretty easy to develop this kind of arm strength because you're not, it's not like you're holding up something heavy with a bent arm, okay? That's bodybuilders, right? When you're using this position of your arm, you don't have to do most of the work. So, um, that's kind of it. The, what I have written on the board here, this big angel wing looking thing is called the sun salute. Um, keep in mind too, you can also cross your arms when you're going up and down. That's another variation, right? That's a little harder in a seated position. So you got to get those legs out of the way. You know, if you're in a chair, odds are you're going to want to stick with the big circles, but you can try a cross if you'd like. Um, the cobra thing is the back bending part, right? And then the downward dog is when you're coming back down, what you want to do in the beginning, this might be as much as you feel like you can handle. But start trying to then move forward. Um, if you're if you're confined to a chair like this, you're going to need some kind of a tool probably in the beginning to start bending forward. Okay, can you scooch over just a bit? We got we got company here, and he's in the way of my my pose. There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so if you have a curved stick, okay. The curve makes a big difference. Don't go out and buy a straight piece of wood in a hardware store. I mean, if you're absolutely stuck and there's nothing else you can do, okay, make it straight. Because something is better than nothing. But if you want to be able to stretch your body, you need a curved stick, okay? So if you have this stick here, um, if, you're, if you're doing the sun salute and you're just stretching, okay, you can't hang on to something, right? So if at all possible, you can bend over to the floor, but I'm going to demonstrate it with the stick first because most of you won't be able to. Um, you just do the sitting version to here, and then you can grab it, get your legs apart, put it out to as far as you can comfortably reach. It's going to be probably a little bit farther than your toes stick out, right? Because people's arms, believe it or not, tend to be as long as their legs. So... Now, I can let my body down without having to use, oh, you can't quite see my hands, any of the muscles in my back. Hang on, let me adjust here. There we go. Okay, so, perched, comfortable, centered. Now I can lean forward, the stick comes into me, and I go out to the stick, both happen right? You can put it wherever. So I don't, I'm using my arms to lower my body down to the ground. If you need to then sweat, that's fine. You can now use your hands. 
maybe you won't be able to get this far. You know, that's okay. But there's going to be different... It, 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 this might seem like a more limited video. Posture groups 8 and 9 is so limited. But there's still a wide variety of experiences, okay? Some of the people in group 9 don't even have legs, okay? Some of the people have had some kind of an injury where they can reach this far and they need to be able to find a way to get down to the ground without hurting whatever is, is causing trouble back there, right? Some of the people have simply been sitting in a wheelchair their whole life and they can't even get farther than this. You know, this might be as far as they can reach, period, right? Whatever it is, having a stick here in front of you, if you're having difficulty going down, will allow you to start going down and start stretching that out. That DD thing stands for downward dog. It's a very famous pose. You basically turn your body into a V. And as you can see here, if I have my knees out to the side and I have something to hang on to out here, I can accomplish a seated version of the downward dog. And it feels fabulous. This is doing a great deal to stretch out the one spot you guys have the most trouble with, which is the old man hunch right here in the middle of your back. That's where I feel this the most. Um, you can, you know, again, you see the basic form here. As far as you get is as far as you get. And the goal is to have it feel good, not to force yourself to do something. So having this stick is invaluable, even when you're sitting in a chair. You know, it allows you to pull on your body in all kinds of different ways to allow your muscles that motion, even though you are confined to a chair, right? They're handy to, hand, a clever tool is a clever tool. And as you can see, this tool is not only as clever as it gets, it involves absolutely no work. All you have to do is go find a stick. <laughs> So, um, the other, yeah, that's about it. Um, there's a couple more tools that I want to show you that do an awful lot to helping you try to wiggle around in different ways when you're stuck in a chair. This one you've seen already, of course. This one showed up in the fixing your furniture stuff, right? So, and I told you it would get shown again, right? This one is a huge help. Back in the day, this is all I used, you know, when I was trying to stretch and move after I'd broken my back. Um, I hadn't built one of these yet, right? These are very, very similar tools. I strongly encourage you to play with both of them. This one can be used very similarly. The difference is, is that you can't apply as much pressure because it's sitting on your lap. And there's going to be times that that's a good thing and times that that's a bad thing. You know, when you're really, really, really tense, you maybe would overdo it with the stick. Um, but this is going to be a gentle version of the same thing. It's just giving you something that you can push on in different ways. As you can see, I don't have to run around doing a bunch of exercises in order to move all the parts of my spine. All you have to do is become a master wiggler. <laughs> kind of like when my daughter wiggled all those four-foot roots out of the ground for tiny little maple babies this tall. You know, she was pulling out root systems like this. That is the art of the wiggle, right? Uh, something to keep in mind that I forgot to mention in the beginning. For posture groups eight and nine is if you're feeling really tense, if it's at all possible, you might want to start with something like sitting on a heating pad or against a heating pad or taking a bath. You know, that might be a little hard work. Most people in groups eight and nine are not up to baths. <laughs> but um, you get the idea. Do something to kind of warm and relax the back right before you try to stretch if you're feeling really, really tense, especially if you're in particularly acute pain at the moment. Something's getting pinched. You really want to take some time doing all the stages. You do some heat relaxing. You do some arm raising. Just sitting there and hanging. 
I mean, you can spend a half an hour just yinging. They know it's like, what? No, my arms aren't that strong. I don't mean continuously. You know, you keep going up and down. Your arms get tired, you go down. You know, and this, again, for the hanging one, if it's that tiring and you want to do it for a while, go back in your chair more. Give yourself a chance to relax. Then you can start going into stretching stuff. And the first thing you do is just whatever your body seems to want to do. When you allow yourself to, you know, try to use this chair. Am I off the camera again? A little bit. Try to use this chair the way a five-year-old would, right? They get real creative. You know, right now, the four parts, like my body is totally anchored super well. I don't have to use any muscles at all. But it lets me twist just by shifting my knees a tiny bit. Oh, now regular people doing floor exercises, they would be hard put to accomplish what you just did using the chair. Right? Just use it in different ways. You can do a whole lot more than just sit there like this, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, oh, and the toe puller. <clears throat> this one is you can use this kind of but it's a little bit short um it'll probably reach oh actually that works really well you know if you use your your um arm rack here i didn't even try that before that is so cool um that works really really well your arms and legs are about the same length I thought you would need to use the old-fashioned kind. Yeah, that's a little short. I like it better like this. So it works well whether you use a wider piece of wood or a thinner one. I'm going to use a thinner one for the video so you can see what my toes are doing a little better. There we go. Oh, that works so perfectly. That is exactly the right height and length for my legs. It's kind of sitting right on my knees. I feel like like I'm I'm totally balanced right now, right? I can just rock that. I'm not using any muscles. This is like being in a rocking chair without actually having to rock. It's really cool. And you're doing both of your legs at once and letting your leg muscles stretch in a way that they don't get stretched because you're always in that chair, right? And you can get as, again, get as high as you can. Don't, don't force it. Make it, like, if I go up here, that feels good for a minute. It's a bit much for me. Right about here, I just, I could sit like this forever. This is very, very comfortable. You can keep shifting exactly where you put your foot on that bar. This is doing a lot more than just stretching this part of your leg, okay? It's also stretching this part of your back. There's, well, it's, it, it, there's lots of stuff that is stretching, right? <laughs> but you'll know because it feels great. You know, when, when we have a pose that feels really, really great, it's because there's something nice happening with lots of different parts of us, right? So this allows you to wiggle around in ways that you use your legs without leaving your chair. Huh. Well, that's very cool. Okay, so I don't think you actually need this one then. <laughs> this is the old-fashioned version. You just, uh, you know, put something there, right? And that lets you, maybe if you don't feel, if, if you try, if you feel like you just cannot be flexible enough to do something like this, then maybe you do still need the old-fashioned toe puller. Like if you're barely able to move, like you just broke your back and, and moving one inch to the side is like a 15-minute thing, you know, then maybe something like this can be helpful. It's just a stick of wood. This is just because I had only, it wasn't long enough, you know. Just uh, make a little corner so that you can grab your toes or a bigger part of your foot if you'd like. I'm sure we can see here, right? You can grab more. But it does basically the same thing. It's a little more 
Well, you'll have to play with both to see what the difference is. Like with this one, I can stretch one side of my body more, and I feel a big difference. Then, of course, it feels unbalanced. you got to go back into the other side. I really like that big square rig. Yeah, yeah. See, it feels like I can stretch a little more by doing one leg at a time. That's true. But it also feels like a bit much. When I use this one instead, it's, uh, it's a lot more comfortable. Um, I feel like I'm getting a full stretch, but I'm not tempted to overdo it. Um, this is the only one that can be easy to kind of overdo things with. Just like more, 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 and you want a different kind of more. Um, you're not going to have that problem with this one. And if you can't lift your, you know, if you're having trouble, oh, I got to sit a little back more in my chair in order to be able to lift my legs. Otherwise, I want to tip over. Okay. So that's one secret. Sit a little back farther in the middle of your chair. You want to get your feet off the ground. Because then gravity is literally lifting your feet for you. That is really cool. If you can't, even just sitting here with your heels on the ground is going to be a big help. And that's about it. You know, I um, I almost kind of want to go back into the other videos and add a little note saying, you know what, you should try the chair stuff because you can almost do more than you can with the floor stuff <laughs> because you've got these handy tools to use, right? So don't let the idea of being stuck in a chair make you think that you are simply incapable of moving in the ways that people need to move. That is not true. Okay, you can use tools in a way that helps your body. You just have to start to become mindful of how your body wants to use them, right? So that's about it. If you're taking this course for credit, um, send me a short video of you doing some stretching. doesn't matter if it's something you made up, if you want to follow this little routine, what have you. Just uh, give me a demonstration. Send it to Ange, cleaninguplady.us. Enjoy. Namaste.